When a scientist dives in salt water to a depth of 9 feet below the surface, the pressure due to the atmosphere and surrounding water is 18.7 pounds per square inch. As the scientist descends, the pressure increases linearly. Keyword right here. At a depth of 14 feet, the pressure is 20.9 pounds per square inch. If the pressure increases at a constant rate, as the scientist's depth below the surface increases, which of the following linear models best describes the pressure P in pounds per square inch at a depth of D feet below the surface? So we've got some lines here. Imagine this is just Y equals mx plus b. They're just linear equations. And as we can see, it's been emphasized to us multiple times that we're dealing with a linear scenario. So we just need to come up with the equation of a line given the data here. So what are our x values, where our x or values, or our d values in this case, are kind of create two points here. At 9 feet, we're at a pressure p of 18.7 pounds. So we're going to do 9 comma 18.7. And then at 14 feet, it's 20.9 pounds. So we can kind of come up with two points here, two coordinate points, just as we would in a typical line question. And now we just find the equation on the line. And the first thing we'll do is we'll find the slope. So 20.9, uh, we're going to do the slope m is the change in y and the change in x, which in this case is the change in p over the change in d, since p is the y and d is the x in this case. So we'll do 20.9 minus 18.7 over 14 minus 9. 20.9 minus 18.7 is 2.2 uh, divided by 5. And we get 0.44. So we go to the choices and we see which has a slope of 0.44. It's not C, it's not D, it's one of these. Now we need to find the y-intercept. So all we really need to do now is go ahead and just plug in a point into both of these and just see which one works. And frankly, we could have done that from the beginning, as it turns out. We could have actually just picked, say, the point 9, 18.7, plugged it into any one of these equations and see if you actually get the answer. And if you do, it's a good sign that that's the answer. You'd have to check both points, though. That's where maybe it gets a little bit annoying. You'd have to check both uh, 9 and 18.7 and 14 and 20.9 because my guess is that more than one of these will work for one of the points. So you'll have to just double check with both. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and test out this one. So let's look at A. 0.44 times D. So it's 0.44 times 9. We're going to add 0.77 to it. And we get 4.73. That's not even close to 18.7. So we'll get rid of that. Let's just check B, even though B is probably going to work. 0.44 times... 14, sorry, times 9. And then we're going to add that to 14.74. And we get 18.7, which is exactly what we're looking for. So when we plug the point in, it works. So the answer to this one is B. Another question that's reminiscent of what you might do in a math class, again, dressed up with a real-life scenario, uh, this time diving in salt water and the pressure as you go underwater. But ultimately, the mechanics of it are very standard line question. You have to set up your, get, find your slope, find your y-intercept, and that gets you your equation of the line. Uh, what's tricky is seeing what your points are. You're not given an x and a y. You have to see that p is your y and d is the d, and then find the slope from there. As I said in the first part of the video, you also could have just plugged in the points here and just sidestepped all of that. That's kind of a shortcut. Well, maybe not a shortcut, but it's a way to sidestep all this other work. Uh, but again, another standard question, if you paid attention in math class and you're good at creating lines from points, this one shouldn't be too bad, even though it does have decimals.